This is discussing ceramic frit that is uh, on uh, spandrel glass. So the big question that is associated with this is that uh, many times it's it's been noted in the past that ceramic frit or the ceramic enamel is glass. This is something that I didn't really realize that is going on in some of the uh, the industry. And uh, this is used a lot whenever they have spandrels that have shadow boxes and stuff like that and uh, insulation behind the, the shadow box. So uh, evidently there's uh, many of many research you know projects that are being conducted. Several industry experts suggest that ceramic enamel is weakening glass and it gets into thermal stresses. The uh, basically indicates that uh, the spandrel glass is an effort to create harmonization with the uh, in the vision area with the vision areas of glass on a project. So you can kind of see a picture over to the left hand side. two surface I think and then the number three or four surface in the insulated glass makeup. Heat loss does occur in the framing system so the edge of the systems tend to be cooler than the center of glass. This creates tensile stress on the perimeter of the glass. If the stress is high enough then the glass is going to crack. So many spandrel applications include a dark color opacifier which absorbs more heat than the light colored opacifiers. Uh, Marino says a dark opacifier on the surface four with a low E coating on surface number two can lead to the inboard light to heat up as the opacifier absorbs heat and the low E uh, coating reflects that heat back into the cavity. So it kind of creates a heat trap inside of the insulated glass that allows heat to build up more and more and uh, to become very hot. He also says that the other factors can contribute to increased thermal stress such as reflective foil, backing material, or a small gap between the inboard light and the insulation or the back pan. So uh, that's where they have the back pan and insulation in back of the insulated glass unit. It can also help to uh, trap more heat. If the gap is not vented, then the heat that builds up in it uh, will magnify how fast the inboard light of insulated glass, uh, the IGU, heats up. So that's a kind of an interesting concept too. I didn't even know that there was a potential to vent the uh, that cavity that's between the insulated glass and the uh, the back pan. He adds that in some cases a piece of insulation could come loose. He goes on, some say that uh, there's been some debate about the degree to which the glass is weakened. He explains that the ceramic enamel includes glass particles, and those particles can expand at a different rate than the glass substrate. So, so that's, uh, that's evidence of different uh, thermal expansion rates, creating additional stress. So he goes on to say that there's some mitigation strategies out there that are being discussed. One of them is to have a testing, it sounds like, according to a ball drop test. Oh no, this goes into testing about um, some, of the de some of the studies that they've done to find out how much it's weakened. So according to the ball drop test performed by ICD and verified by Morrison, Heat strengthened glass with silicone opacifiers broke at drop heights 145% to 150% greater than uncoated heat strengthened glass. That's with, that's with a silicone opacifier. Whereas heat strengthened glass with ceramic enamel broke at a drop height of only 31% of the uh, uncoated heat strengthened glass. So we can see that the ceramic glass uh, definitely 
has a, a sharp reduction. And uh, so I think that this was a push for a different type of a um, opacifier to be included uh, that is silicone instead of ceramic because you actually get a, a benefit from, the, from that opacifier. Torek says that avoiding the use of ceramic enamel is a too limited of an approach because it's needed for applications requiring a pattern or photorealistic image. I think that we're probably going to see a lot more of this because architects are wanting to do more and more with patterns and uh, photos in the, uh, in the glass, insulated glass units. If conditions warrant it, he suggests using fully tempered glass on the inboard light. Well, for most spandrel glass, we should have tempered anyway, just out of the concerns associated with thermal expansion. So uh, watch for that. Make sure that we have tempered glass specified on uh, both pieces of glass if it's a spandrel unit. That's kind of my rule of thumb. So taking action, he go, they go into more of an effort of, you know, what is the industry trying to do associated with uh, getting this into standards uh, so that, so that uh, we don't have glass breakage. There have been many efforts by industry advocates to include the weakening of glass by ceramic enamel into ASTM E1300. By saying that the glass is weakened even beyond uh, that by ceramic frit is double dipping on weathering. In our opinion, the aspect of the glass being weakened by ceramic frit is not valid as the glass already has reduced strength characteristics from, from weathering. So there's an issue evidently that is being tossed around by the ASTM E1300 committee where they're arguing about uh, weathering effects on glass and all this, this additional weakening because of the ceramic frit. Uh, I see the, I don't understand what the issue is that they're discussing in the committee, but it seems like it's two different issues to me, but uh, evidently we're getting something of a quote that indicates that they want to, uh, they don't want to double dip on the, the reductions. Barry says that in Europe, that, that Europe has addressed ceramic enamel with its uh, uh, similar code to ASTM E1300, incorporating a weakening factor of 35 to 38% on the load capacity of the glass, depending if the uh, glass is heat strengthened or tempered. So it looks like that there is an adjustment factor built in there based on just heat strengthened to tempered uh, the type of reduction that you would use for the strength of the uh, the uh, the glass. And I'm not sure if that if this applies to the insulated glass uh, unit as a whole, or whether this is just uh, well, I guess it would because you kind of you kind of go through the ASTM E1300 and the uh, the overall strength of the insulated glass unit. Uh, is based upon the weakest pane of glass. So I would imagine that that goes on to the insulated glass unit as a whole, as a factor. So that's something that we might, you know, think about and consider, especially whenever we're getting into larger sizes of spandrel units. We might think about uh, just applying a, uh, a factor that models what Europe is already doing to reduce the of the glass. Barry says that uh, all enameled heat treated spandrel breaks seen to date have seen to date have been in double glazed uh, units with the enameled light inboard. So that's basically it uh, associated with ceramic uh, frit on uh, spandrel units. Any questions about that? A very interesting article. It brought to light some issues that I don't think that we've ever seen before, but just uh, definitely something to be aware of. Any questions about that? Uh, I have a comment on it. So I think that E1300 um, discussion that they're talking about is 
E1300 doesn't apply to any glass that has any surface coatings or edge coatings or holes or anything like that. So I'll, I don't know that a ceramic frit, cause we, I believe we talked about this a while back when we had the Walker guys in talking about their their uh, bird glass and whatnot, if anybody right. that remembers that. And I believe we discussed then that E1300 doesn't apply to that kind of texture on glass because it alters the glass properties chemically and everything else to allow that to stay there. Um, so right now, I don't know the best approach if we would see this in a project because we can't use you know, the standard methods of, you know, doing IGU, IGU analysis using E1300 because it doesn't apply to these situations. Yeah, so I was kind of going on that same direction as Kyle. Um, I actually opened up E1300 because I was going to talk about the weathering thing. But yeah, it actually says up front, this practice does not apply to glass with surface or edge treatments that reduce the glass strength. Yeah, so so ultimately, uh, you know, I think what is being pointed at in this article is that, you know, they've noted that there's some type of an issue going on with ceramic frit that is causing a, a weakening. So there's studies that have been performed. There's potential solutions that they've been trying to pose. Evidently, you know, it's being it's being discussed under the ASTM E1300 committee, and they're having some disagreements associated with, you know, do we want to uh, uh, pick this up or not, you know, in part of a, and they basically have said, no, ASTM E1300 is is not the area, you know, to be able to, uh, to discuss this. So I, mean, I think it would have to be under a new one. Because, I mean, you're, you really are altering the glass. And I, I don't know much about ceramic frit, I'll be honest. Um, is it similar to what we have seen with the patterned glass from, like, Walker for the bird stuff? Or is it completely on the whole entire surface, Stuart? Do you, does the article think, cover that? Yeah, I think what they're uh, pointing at is that it's not just a light pattern you know, a, a small amount of patterning that that they're having some issues with. It's whenever they use it on the entire back surface of a insulated glass unit. Whenever they do that for spandrel glass, uh, for whatever reasons that the architect has, they're noticing that they're having a lot of breakage. And so they've gone into a study of why, and it's because of a different thermal characteristic that it you know creates for that uh, for that insulated glass unit you know, for the at least the back uh, light of glass in the insulated glass unit. So I you know I think that uh, I you know I'm not sure what to do about this if we see it, but definitely something to be aware of because it's becoming a a larger issue in the industry. And as we see architects wanting to do more stuff associated with uh, patterns and artwork incorporated into insulated glass units, let that be a flag that, you know, we may have some issues associated with ceramic frit because they may have some heavy uh, ceramic frit applied to that for that art. So is that, uh, is that, I think that's referred to also as etching, glass etching, or, or, I, or, I think that the that's same thing? different. Oh, I think that's is different usually, than edging. Yeah, it's usually like an acid process, more like a sandblast that takes glass away instead of applying a ceramic and making it on. Okay. S supposedly, you know, there's studies out there that show that etching really doesn't affect the, the strength of the glass. Okay. But what's, this ceramic what's the driving? Does. So, so I think you you might have explained it at the beginning, but can you repeat what the what the driving factor behind uh, using this ceramic case on those pendril areas? Like, what 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 why what's the benefit to either the architect? Yeah, so I think that they're they're indicating that the benefit to the architect is 
twofold. One, they, they may want to make the vision glass look more like the spandrel. Or, number two, they want to make the spandrel not look like part of the vision glass. So, uh, I, you know, I think it's just a decorative component that they're starting to see more uh, more push in the area, you know, of architects wanting to do something different with the spandrel areas mm -hmm. and still keep, uh, you know, um, still keep people from seeing, you know, the structure. That's what the, that's what the spandrel glass is, you know, made to look like a different color. They don't want people seeing through to the structure and up into the HVAC area and all the other stuff. Because the thermal conductivity should shouldn't be affected that much, right? Uh, the the I it still is like an IGU still has an air barrier in the side. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So Whatever the thermal happens, aspects. Being satisfied with a plastic film. Like What's tint that? your windows. Whatever happened, just be satisfied with tinting your windows like you do your car. Whatever happened to that? It's technology. Technology's growing, and we got to use all our new cool bells and whistles. And create just, these, cool, these fashionable lighted cities. They're going to look awesome. Just because technology's getting quote unquote better doesn't mean it's actually better. It just means it's new. You're sounding like an old man, Kyle. You're I am an old man. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old at heart. <laughs> Let's say that we run into one of these applications and they've got, you know, the architect is wanting to have artwork that's like a center band all around the spandrel unit and that they've got a lot of ceramic frit that's associated with the spandrel creating this, this band of artwork, you know, that they want to have. Would it be, you know, maybe a conservative approach to apply like the Europeans do? A 35% reduction to the to the strength of the glass unit after we after we get a value of you know something out of ASTM E1300 for for the design. Is there a standard that goes with that reduction? Say that again. Is there a standard that goes with that reduction? Uh, so let me point back to that. It's a European standard. That's the right. I thought there was one listed. I didn't catch what the number was. Um, Darn it! I did it again. I think the argument on the weathering stuff that's right above that in E thirteen hundred. Yeah. The assumptions they made for the load charts in E thirteen hundred is based on glass that's been weathered for twenty years. So. In the appendix one, it even says freshly manufactured glass would be maybe conservative using those charts. So I think that's the argument they're trying to make is that there's already capacity there, but it doesn't say how much. So so maybe the ASTM you know committee is saying, well, you know, maybe if you use some of the weathering effects associated with 20 years. Maybe you're getting down to a uh, a usable capacity for these types of units. Is that what you're thinking? That seems to be what the article's arguing or that quote's arguing because if because that that first line that you've highlighted by saying the glass is weakened even beyond that by a ceramic frit is double dipping on weathering that if you take that 30% on top of E1300, you're taking way too much since the weathering is already a reduction and the ceramic side isn't going to be weathered. Hmm. I think this is, I mean, if we see it, the best thing we have to do is just bring it up to the architect and say, hey, this really isn't covered yet by any American ASTM standard. Um... And, you know, maybe the best approach that we could work out is say, you know, we could potentially look at reducing for analysis of the glass, the thickness by half. So instead of having a quarter on quarter, we could analyze a quarter on an eighth. Because if 
it should be that if an eighth inch light works, then a quarter with frit hopefully should work. But, you know, that would be something that I think we just have to discuss as a design team with the subcontractor, you know, the glazing contractor, the architect, and potentially the ownership group, whoever's taking ownership of the structure, and just let them know, hey, this is what's going on. It's, it hasn't been addressed yet by the ASTM committees. So, yeah, you can use it, but you may have to get testing or... The size of Spandrel units are typically fairly small. So, you know, when when is it going to be that the strength of a Spandrel light is going to govern? Uh, Hardly ever, unless we get into a, uh, a special situation where they're trying to make it more of an artwork. Yeah. You know? So that's why I'm kind of bringing up a hypothetical. Yeah, and I think also maybe if we have a coastal area building with this, then we're get, getting into the whole high, uh, large and small missile testing that we then I would be a lot more cautious not to extrapolate data from like a regular IGU to use into this maybe f for for a ceramic type unit like this th there would have to be specific testing for for a large missile and small missile so yeah, sure. that adds a, in a whole new caveat, you know, because you yeah. the 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 back back light, you know, would obviously have to be laminated anyway. Correct. But, uh, so and and uh, usually the the testing, you know, that's a that's a tested requirement. Nothing that we can come know, up with, with numbers. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then you got to consider blast. We haven't seen this on a blast project, but could it come to a blast project down the road? Potentially. I mean... Well, anyway, I thought that this was, you know, something that was worthy of bringing to attention some of the issues that they're kind of going through in ASTM committees and, and issues with the, uh, the spandrel lights and ceramic fret. The trade journals are saying that more and more artistic uh, work on glass is going yeah. to be more the norm. So I think we are going to see it. Talk a little bit about the implications to our clients. What is it they need to know or don't need to know? And how can we avoid the appearance of over-engineering and, and show really the value of having this knowledge? Yeah, so I, I think the importance to our clients is to be aware that there may be a strength reduction that's associated with ceramic frit whenever uh, architects are specifying this in the uh, Especially in the pan, in the uh, the spandrel areas of glass, and that uh, that there probably needs to be a discussion with the architect. You know, a three-way discussion of how this impacts the you know the potential strength of the insulated glass unit. I think that's the big takeaway from this for our clients.